Greetings, I'm Shad. Yes, this is the third video on the heater shield. Last video, I left it off with a significant question that demands to be answered. And that is, with all the things that we talked about in the previous video about what function the heater shield serves, the question is, is it then an effective shield to be used without armor? Because the heater shield, like we talked about, is kind of the uh, backup to armor. If your armor fails, that's the shield you want to protect you against the things that can get past armor. Now that question can seem a little bit loaded because it's better to have this shield than nothing. So if you don't, you're not wearing armor, you, you know, and you have that, you'd still be quite grateful. But is it the best shield to wear to use when not in armor? And I feel the big, the main, you know, huge answer to that is, of course, not at all. Okay, so. Out of the shields you can pick from, the classic ones, it is actually, I feel, the least effective shield to be used when not wearing armor or wearing partial, very light kind of armor. Of course, the buckler, in essence, is less effective than the kite shield, but it has convenience, okay? That's, that's a big difference between these two shields right here. This thing is convenient to carry with you. That thing, and indeed any other shield larger than it, is not. And so the guy who is using a one-handed sword and has a free hand to uh, wield something else if he wishes, the buckler is a great pick. It's a defensive item. It gives you an advantage over someone who is just having one, if they're using a one-handed sword, it just has one thing. It really gives you a big advantage having these two things, you know, a defensive weapon tool and an offensive weapon. You see, because I can carry the buckler around as easy as I can carry my sword. Sword goes in the sheath, and this just hangs over the top like that, and uh, I can just let go, and I'm perfectly fine. Not a problem at all. And when I need to whip him out to fight, it's there. Easy. And so the buckler does appear you know, on battlefields. It was used on battlefields because it's, you know, a backup shield, just like the sword is a sidearm, your backup weapon, or the, uh, the buckler is the backup shield. So the answer really is, it, look, it is effective to an extent. You'll still be able to use it to protect yourself, but it does not protect yourself nearly as much as the other two kind of iconic shields, kite shield or the round shield. And I mean the larger round shield, because indeed you can actually get smaller round shields about the size of the heater shield. Um, and you know, that's called a Taj, one that's strapped to the arm, but that's actually a later period shield. So this is where a pet peeve of mine arises. And that is when I see, you know, in movies and pop culture, so TV shows, anime, comic books, and other things like that, the thing that peeves me is uh, guys adventurers or whatever going about and they're wearing substandard armor that does not fully protect themselves so they're to begin with they're not even clad in full chain full mail uh, or they're not clad in full plate all right and so th that's what i consider sub you know and any armor is good, so don't misunderstand me when I'm saying this, okay? But if you're wearing leather armor or just a male hauberk or something like that, and you have very open areas on your body that are not protected, the heater shield is a rubbish shield to pick. And yes, we've talked about the buckler because people who were not wearing armor carried a buckler, but you know the reasons why. If you ask those people who carried a buckler, if you, had, you know, knew you were going to get in a fight today, would you still want to take the buckler with you? Or would you like to take this beast, okay, that protects your whole body and has so much more versatility? Which shield do you honestly think they're going to pick? They would pick a shield that protects them far more than the buckler or a kite shield. Absolutely! You see, the kite shield, all right, you watch, look at, you know, reenactors and people who practice Hebrew and stuff like that. You, you could find videos where people are using a kite shield to defend themselves and you will find that it's not hugely effective, okay? It is effective to an extent, but it doesn't take much to get over the shield or under the shield or beside the shield because the shield is very, very small. And that applies to the buckler as well. So you need to understand that, all right? The heater shield is meant to protect the armored combatant against the types of weapons that can get through armor. That's its main function and purpose, all right? Yes, now look, there are cases of guys who are not wearing, you know, heaps amounts of armor on foot and stuff like that, still using, you know, a heater shield, bad pick in my opinion, all right? And again, if you were to give them the option, like here's a bigger shield or that, I think we can all agree they would pick a better shield. So Link from the Legend of Zelda series, you're an idiot.
And I do feel that in, you know, movies, video games, pop culture, comic books and stuff like that, people, when they think, I want to give this character a shield, they pick the kite shield just because it's the most iconic and, it, and honestly, the kite shield looks cool, all right? It is an awesome looking shield. It's got this iconic shape that is just awesome. But just because it looks cool is not reason to defy logic or practicality. And so if you ever make a character in anything, if you're role playing, I role play a lot, it's no surprise there, and you're about to give the character a shield or you're watching a movie or something like that where the characters are using a shield, know the reasons why you would pick a kite shield. Don't just pick it because you know of it and it looks cool. And now that's the shield you think knight should carry. If that knight was not wearing heavy armor, I feel most definitely he would pick a different shield. Because remember, I've been talking about the fact that the kite shield is used to protect against the bigger blows, all right? But when you're not in armor, I say you want something, uh, a bigger shield to protect you. The other shields, kite shield, viking shield, they will still protect you against maces, pole axes, lances, and other things like that. Granted, they're not as thick, all right? So a lance, there is a chance that this will go through, and these should be more predominantly center grip shields, and so they will tilt and stuff when getting hit. But that tilting action needs to be understood in this correct context because that can provide a huge advantage, and in the, you know, in, for mo in most cases, the, those other shields would protect you just as well. They wouldn't survive as long. That's an important thing. I mean, the heater shield, thicker shield, it's made to be, you know, take on the big blows and things like that. And so its survivability um, uh, is greater than uh, the kite shield or skiolder. So in summary, the kite shield is a shield that is meant to be used with armor specifically to protect the armored combatant against blows that can get through armor. That's why it is more a strapped on shield than a cinder grip shield. But if you are not wearing armor, you would want a shield that offers far more protection. Because remember with a kite shield, you already have protection. You have the armor, this is just your backup. But when you're not wearing armor, this does not provide enough protection. A backup shield is not what you want. You want something that offers, you know, good protection. Could it offer as much protection as armor? It depends how good you are with the shield, but it can. It can protect you heaps. And so the kite shield is a rubbish shield to use when not wearing armor specifically. So I hope we understand it now. I hope everything is in context and we understand a bit more about the kite shield. I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching.